The Book of Proverbs Chapter 21 Proverbs 21 verses 1 to 31 The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the river is of water, he turneth it whithersoever he will. Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. To do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. An high look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked is sin. The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them because they refuse to do judgment. The way of man is froward and strange, but as for the pure, his work is right. It is better to dwell in a corner of the house top than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. The desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He coveteth greedily all day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. The sacrifice of the wicked is abomination, how much more when he bringeth it with a wicked mind. A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle but safety is of the Lord. Opening sentence. Proverbs 21 verse 1 The king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, as the river is of water. He turneth it whithersoever he will. The Lord turns the king's heart the way he desires it to go. This applies to a good king and an evil one. The question is, how does he do it? Does this verse imply that God violates the king's freedom to choose? No. This entire chapter and the entire book of Proverbs is about making wise choices. God is truth, and it is up to the king to choose to obey or to reject him. God has a will and a purpose for both the heaven and the earth, which is laid out in the Holy Bible. God will accomplish his purpose, and he is so powerful and wise that he can do all this without violating the free will of man. Consider Pharaoh, the king of Egypt. He resisted God's will to let his people go, but Pharaoh could not resist God's judgments. God ultimately turned Pharaoh's heart with a series of judgments against the king, the nation, and their false gods, which caused Pharaoh to willingly let his people go. God ponders the heart. Proverbs 21 verse 2 Every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. God knows what is in every man's heart, and he will judge accordingly. Finding the theme, choosing to do justice and judgment. The theme of doing justice and judgment is repeated in verses 3, 7, and 15 of this chapter. Doing justice and judgment is a choice that men must make and a work that God desires. Proverbs 21 verse 3 to do justice and judgment is more acceptable to the Lord than sacrifice. To do justice and judgment requires knowing what is acceptable to God. To know what is acceptable to God requires laboring in his word. The king of the nation of Israel was required to write his own copy of the law, which is a laborious task. Deuteronomy 17 verse 18, And it shall be, when he sitteth upon the throne of his kingdom, that he shall write him a copy of this law and a book out of that which is before the priests the Levites. Two kinds of labor. The king could labor in the word of God, 
or he could resist God's will in his own wicked pride. Proverbs 21 verse 4 An high look and a proud heart and the plowing of the wicked is sin. Verse 4 proves that man is spirit, soul, and body. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 An high look refers to his mind, as in being high-minded. A proud heart refers to the condition of his soul, and man labors with his body according to the condition of his mind and soul. Plowing is the labor performed in order to sow seeds. Jesus spoke a parable about the seeds of the wicked being sown. Matthew 13 verses 24 to 25 Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. Matthew 13 verses 38 to 39 The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels. Men either labor for the Lord to accomplish his will, or they labor for the devil to please their own flesh. Diligent or hasty. Several forms of the word diligent are found in the book of Proverbs. A diligent person is patient, determined, attentive to details, and purposeful. For some, the goal is to walk pleasing to God. For others, the goal is to please their own flesh. Proverbs 21 verses 5 to 6 The thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but of everyone that is hasty only to want. The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Most often, the word hasty is used in reference to the pursuit of physical riches. Often, those who seek riches will lie and murder to get what they want. Proverbs 1 verses 11 to 16. Refusing to do justice and judgment. Proverbs 21 verse 7. The robbery of the wicked shall destroy them, because they refuse to do judgment. A man who refused to do what God required was robbing God. The topic of robbing God is highlighted in scripture, particularly when the nation of Israel stopped bringing tithes to the temple as required by the law of Moses. Compare verses 7 and 20 of this chapter and also read Malachi 3 verse 8 to understand how Israel spent the tithe on themselves instead of bringing it to the temple. Malachi 3 verse 8, Will a man rob God? Yet ye have robbed me. But ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings, the way of man. Proverbs 21 verse 8, The way of man is froward and strange. But as for the pure, his work is right. This proverb compares the way of man with the work of man. The word but indicates a contrast. Obviously, the man in this proverb is not the same person as the pure. There has only ever been one man who is pure and whose work is right, the God-man Jesus Christ. The word toward means to move in the direction of something or someone, and the word froward man's to move away from something or someone, namely God. The word strange means unknown or unfamiliar. The Bible teaches a clear contrast between God's ways and man's ways. Isaiah 55 verse 9, For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Choose that which is better than. Proverbs 21 verses 9 to 10, It is better to dwell in a corner of the house stop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. The soul of the wicked desireth evil, his neighbor findeth no favor in his eyes. The brawling woman is the strange woman of Proverbs chapters 2, 5 to 7 and 20. She is also found in the book of Revelation chapters 2 and 17. She is the religious system of the world who seduces Israel and the nations to worship devils instead of God. The soul of the wicked rejects God and follows after this great whore. The wicked will betray his family and his neighbors who do not agree to worship the Antichrist and take his mark. Micah 7 verse 6, Mark 13 verse 12. Micah 7 verse 6, For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter riseth up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's enemies are the men of his own house. Mark 13 verse 12, Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. Wisely consider. Proverbs 21 verses 11 to 12, When the scorner is punished, the simple is made wise, and when the wise is instructed, he receiveth knowledge. The righteous man wisely considereth the house of the wicked, but God overthroweth the wicked for their wickedness. A scorner is one who despises and rejects God's word. 
When God punishes the scorner, the simple-minded have an opportunity to learn from it. The simpler can become wise and learn to consider the result of failing to make the right choices. Refusing to hear. Proverbs 21 verse 13 Whoso stoppeth his ears at the cry of the poor, he also shall cry himself, but shall not be heard. The law of Moses commanded Israel to care for the poor among them. Leviticus 19 verse 10 Deuteronomy 24 verse 15 God hears the cry of the poor, but he refuses to hear the cry of those who will not obey his word. Proverbs 1 verses 27 to 32. Deuteronomy 15 verse 9. Beware that there be not a thought in thy wicked heart, saying, The seventh year, the year of release, is at hand, and thine I be evil against thy poor brother, and thou givest him not, and he cry unto the Lord against thee, and it be sin unto thee. Choose joy or destruction. Proverbs 21 verses 14 to 15 A gift in secret pacifieth anger, and a reward in the bosom strong wrath. It is joy to the just to do judgment, but destruction shall be to the workers of iniquity. A wicked man will give a gift, a bribe, in secret to pacify strong wrath, which is a perversion of justice. A just king will not accept a bribe, but will judge with righteous judgment. Ultimately, God shall destroy those who pervert judgment and justice. Exodus 23 verse 8, And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise, and perverteth the words of the righteous. Choose the way of understanding. Proverbs 21 verse 16, The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. The passage of scripture from Proverbs 21 verses 16 to 24 should be understood in light of the tribulation that is coming upon the nation of Israel. Walking in God's way will lead to life, but wandering out of his way will only lead to death. Choose pleasure and suffer the consequences. Proverbs 21 verses 17 to 18, He that loveth pleasure shall be a poor man. He that loveth wine and oil shall not be rich. The wicked shall be a ransom for the righteous and the transgressor for the upright. By comparing verse 17 to verses 7 and 20, it is understood that a man who loves pleasure is a man who chooses to consume the wine and oil for which he has labored. Instead, he ought to bring it into the temple for the priests to live on as required in the law of Moses. Numbers 18 colon 28 dash 30. Nehemiah 10 verse 37. The wicked man robs God of his tithes and offering, Malachi 3 verse 8, and spends it on pleasure for himself. As a result, the wicked man will not be delivered from God's coming wrath. His life will be required as a ransom in place of the righteous man who obeys God. Proverbs 11 verse 8. The righteous is delivered out of trouble, and the wicked cometh in his stead. The choice to suffer for righteousness sake. Proverbs 21 verse 19. It is better to dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious and an angry woman. The time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 30 verse 7, will come upon the nation of Israel, and they must flee out of Jerusalem in order to escape the contentious, angry, brawling woman who is known as the great whore of Babylon. They will have to choose between accepting the mark of the beast in order to buy food or fleeing into the wilderness, where they must trust God for their daily bread. Jeremiah 6 verse 1, Matthew 6 verse 11, Revelation 12 verse 6. Treasure it up or spend it up. Proverbs 21 verse 20, There is treasure to be desired and oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. This proverb harkens back to the previous verses about making wise choices based on the word of God, the treasure to be desired, or choosing to devour worldly pleasures instead. Choose to follow after righteousness. Proverbs 21 verse 21, He that followeth after righteousness and mercy findeth life, righteousness and honor. Verse 21 should be contrasted against verses 6 and 16. Choosing to obey God will lead to life, but choosing to pursue riches and disobey God will lead to death. Wisdom is better than a strong city. Proverbs 21 verse 22, A wise man scaleth the city of the mighty, and casteth down the strength of the confidence thereof. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 19, Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. It was God's will for the city of Jerusalem to become a strong city, and the city of the great king, Psalms 48 verse 2. Instead, Jerusalem became a city full of murder, violence, perverseness, and robbery. In the book of Revelation, the harlot city of Jerusalem, Isaiah 1 verse 21, becomes the great whore called Babylon, Matthew 23 verse 37, Revelation 11 verse 8, 14 verse 8, 16 verse 6, 18 24, who is known for shedding innocent blood, 
the blood of the prophets, the apostles and the Lord Jesus Christ, God's will for Jerusalem will be realized, but only after he pours out great tribulation upon that city in order to purge it completely from its wickedness. Choose to guard the tongue. Proverbs 21 verses 23 to 24 Whoso keepeth his mouth and his tongue keepeth his soul from troubles. Proud and haughty scorner is his name, who dealeth in proud wrath. A scorner will not choose to be corrected by the word of God. Proverbs 13 verse 1, 15, 12. Instead, the scorner boasts great swelling words and stirs up wrath, Proverbs 29 verse 8. Jude describes the speech of this sort of ungodly person, 2 Peter 2 verse 18, who resist God's will in the last days. Jude 1 verse 16, these are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Choose to yo labor and give. Proverbs 21 verses 25 to 26, the desire of the slothful killeth him, for his hands refuse to labor. He coveteth greedily all the day long, but the righteous giveth and spareth not. This is the same slothful man of Proverbs 20 verse 4, who will starve to death because he will not plow the field. This is a man who will not labor in God's word, therefore, he will be destitute of wisdom and have none to give. Choose to bring the right sacrifice with the right attitude. Proverbs 21 verse 27, the sacrifice of the wicked is abomination, how much more, when he bringeth it with a wicked mind? Sacrifices were a requirement in the law of Moses, but it was possible for a person to bring them while rejecting God in their hearts. Psalms 78 verses 36 to 37, Nevertheless they did flatter, God, with their mouth, and they lied unto him with their tongues. For their heart was not right with him, neither were they steadfast in his covenant. Doing justice and judgment was not accomplished by outwardly obeying commandments. It required loving God with the whole heart. Matthew 15 verse 8, This people draweth nigh unto me with their mouth, and honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Deuteronomy 6 verse 5, And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Choose to speak constantly. Proverbs 21 verse 28, A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. False witnesses will often disagree with each other because their witnesses are lies. A wise man hears the truth of the word of God and speaks the exact same thing. A false witness is a liar who has turned away from God, and in the end he shall perish. Mark 14 verse 56, For many bear false witness against him, Jesus, but their witness agreed not together. Revelation 21 verse 8, But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Choose to hear, not harden. Proverbs 21 verse 29, A wicked man hardeneth his face, but as for the upright, he directeth his way. To be hardened is to refuse to hear and submit to the word of the Lord because of unbelief. The upright man chooses to hear and believe God's word, which directs him in the right way. 2 Kings 17 verse 14, Notwithstanding they would not hear, but hardened their necks, like to the neck of their fathers, that did not believe in the Lord their God. Jeremiah 5 verse 3, O Lord, are not thine eyes upon the truth? Thou hast stricken them, but they have not grieved. Thou hast consumed them, but they have refused to receive correction. They have made their faces harder than a rock. They have refused to return. Conclusion Proverbs 21 ends the same way it began, with the Lord accomplishing his will his way. There is no man, nor other created being, that can hinder God's purpose for heaven and earth. Proverbs 21 verses 30 to 31, There is no wisdom nor understanding nor counsel against the Lord. The horse is prepared against the day of battle, but safety is of the Lord. Summary Although men do resist God's will and take counsel against him, Psalms 2 verses 1 to 3 cross-reference Acts 4 verses 25 to 28, they cannot resist his righteous judgment. God will accomplish his purpose in heaven and earth, even while allowing men and angels to have free will. Dispensational consideration. God's will and purpose in each dispensation is for all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of the truth. God gave different instructions to different people in different dispensations. To Adam and Eve, he gave one command. They could freely eat from all trusts except one. God told Noah that he could eat everything that moves. To Moses and the nation of Israel God gave his law, which limited the foods they could eat to certain clean beasts. 
God told the Gentiles through the Apostle Paul that every creature is good for food. Men in each dispensation prove their faith by believing God and obeying what he said. God's word is his way of getting faithful men to do his will. In this current dispensation of grace, God is offering grace and peace to all men who will believe that Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection paid their sin debt. He is not pouring out wrath as he did in Noah and Pharaoh's day. However, his word promises that a day of judgment is coming upon this world. Whatever God says is true, and it will assuredly come to pass in due time. Labor is an expectation in every dispensation. A person is expected to labor for his own food, Proverbs 16 verse 26, and clothing, 1 Timothy 6 verse 8, the needs of his own family, Exodus 21 verse 10, 1 Timothy 5 verse 8, and for the poor. Deuteronomy 10 verse 18, Ephesians 4 verse 28. Believers are also expected to labor in God's word, 1 Timothy 4 verse 13, 2 Timothy 2 verse 15, 1 Corinthians 15 verse 58. Under the law of Moses, Israel was required to follow very specific instructions for bringing tithes and offerings. In this dispensation, believers are not under the law but under grace. Romans 6 verse 14, and there is no longer a requirement to bring tithes. Instead, God instructs believers today to give cheerfully in proportion to what each believer possesses. 2 Corinthians 8 verses 12 to 15, 9 colon 7. Life Application Proverbs is the book of wisdom written to God's Son, the nation of Israel. However, believers may correctly apply the wisdom of Proverbs to their own lives. To do justice and judgment is applicable in every dispensation. Believers are not to seek after physical treasures and pleasures, but to be content with food and clothing while laboring in the ministry to see lost souls saved and saved men edified. Pitying the poor and giving to those who are in need is applicable to everyone, and guarding the tongue is a still a good way to keep out of trouble. The motive to serve God should always be from a heart of love and gratitude. Believers should know the word of God and speak it constantly. Proverbs 22 verse 2 The rich and poor meet together. The Lord is the maker of them all. In chapter 22, the rich and poor are equal in God's eyes, but the rich have a greater responsibility. Proverbs chapter 21, homework. Read, Psalms 21 is a companion chapter to Proverbs 21. Note that the king is blessed with the desire of his heart because he trusted in the Lord. Find out what this means. In Matthew 9 verse 13, Jesus told the Pharisees to look into the scriptures and find out what this means. God desires mercy and not sacrifice. This specific quote comes from Hosea 6 verse 6, which should be studied in context to understand the corrupt condition of the nation of Israel. Many passages of scripture promote obeying God rather than bringing him a sacrifice. Cain disregarded God's instructions for the required sacrifice, and instead he brought the sacrifice of his own labor, Genesis 4 verses 3 and 5. King Saul disobeyed God's command to destroy all living things pertaining to Amalek, and instead offered them to God for a sacrifice, 1 Samuel 15 verses 1 to 22. This caused God to reject Saul as king. See also Psalm 69 verses 30 to 31. There is no doubt that God required sacrifices in the law of Moses, and no man would be without guilt if he refused to offer them. However, it was possible to bring a sacrifice in outward obedience to the law while having a heart that was far away from God. Proverbs 21 verse 27. There were even times in Israel's history when they would sacrifice to pagan gods, and on the same day they would bring sacrifices to God in the temple. Isaiah 1, Ezekiel 23 verses 38 to 39. Giving careful attention to these details in God's word will increase our understanding of the Proverbs. Concordance search, find all the forms of the word diligent, which includes diligence and diligently in the King James Bible. Consider their use in the first five books of the Bible to establish a biblical definition. Compare your results with the definition given in Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Consider their use in the book of Proverbs. Note that diligence is a character trait assigned to both good and evil men throughout the scriptures. On robbing God, the tribe of Levi was not given an inheritance in the promised land. Numbers 18,23-24. They were to be supported by the grain, oil, wine, and cattle produced by the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. 
When Israel refused to obey God in this matter, he said that Israel had robbed him. See Malachi 3 verse 8. After the nation was scattered out of the promised land for 70 years because of their adultery and disobedience, Jeremiah 25 verse 11, a remnant returned to rebuild the temple, Ezra and Nehemiah. In the book of Nehemiah, particularly chapter 10, the tithes were once again brought into the storehouses of the temple as a means to support the priests. He who stops his ERS using Bible Gateway find the words stop and ears used together. They are found four times in the King James Bible. One is a reference to stopping the ears from hearing anything evil, which is a good thing. The context of the remaining three references should be studied carefully. Proverbs 21 verse 13, Acts 7 verse 57, Zechariah 7 verse 11. The stoning of Stephen in Acts chapter 7 is linked to Israel's refusal to hear the words of God. God makes it clear in his word that those who refuse to hear him will not be heard when they cry to him for help. Proverbs chapter 1 colon 28-30 confirms this. Wisdom says, Then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Consider, the following verses contrast those who are heard by God and those he refused to hear. Exodus 3 verse 7 and 1 Samuel 8 verse 18. Job 19 verse 7 and Job 34 verse 28. Psalms 18 verse 6 and Psalms 22 verse 2. Jerusalem, the strong city. Read, the following references concern the vile condition of the city of Jerusalem when they turned away from following God. Isaiah 1 verse 21 a murderous harlot. Lamentations 1 verse 1, a slave. Ezekiel 9 verse 9, filled with perverseness. Nahum 3 verse 1, filled with robbery. Define, using Bible gateway, find the word constant in the King James Bible. It is used four times, including the adverb constantly. Compare these verses with the definition given in a Webster's 1828 dictionary. The day of battle, you can read a summary of the day of battle in Psalms 2 when the nation of unbelieving Israel enters a consideration with the Gentile nations of the earth. They take counsel together to destroy Jesus, Psalms 2 verse 2. This battle was first attempted at the cross, Acts 4 verses 25 to 26, and it will be attempted again at Jesus' second coming, Revelation 19 verse 19.